Silver has changed so much since I started stacking back in 2015. Some of those changes have been good, some have been less so good. And in today's video I want to talk about the good, the bad and the ugly of the changing face of silver and how that might instill where it will go into the future and help us make the right decisions for our stacking journeys. Everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for another Precious Metal Ramble. Now today I want to talk about the changing face of silver, whether you call it stacking, collecting or investing. Things have changed immeasurably since I started back in 2015 and they've taken an accelerated change graph over the last couple of years as well. So I want to share some of my observations of those changes, some of the things I like about the changing face of silver and the things that I don't like, the good, the bad, and the ugly, so to speak. There will be a lot of opinion shared today. It's not financial advice, very important to say that. And I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions as we go throughout the video. So please feel free to comment down below. It's always great to hear from seasoned stackers as to your observations of change. And also from newbies, what are you thinking right now in this crazy world of silver? So crazy world of silver is where I kind of want to start because we really are in a very unique part of Silver's history, I think. I do agree with a lot of the Silver content creators and bloggers and vloggers and all of those other people out there that say Silver is an undervalued asset right now. When you look at everything else in this world, Silver is still very cheap. The problem that comes with Silver is a lot of the premium that's on top of it. And some people say that that premium is the real price of silver. I kind of disagree in a way because the premium will increase even more if spot price increases to match the current premium. So a lot of people think that because there is premium on silver right now, it is massively undervalued. Take it from me, those premiums will still be there when you have a shift in that spot price. And I can reflect on that back to the earlier days when I got started stacking gold and silver back in 2015 because when you looked online to buy your gold and silver, you would see silver from places like eBay at around 20, 25 pounds an ounce. That was the kind of going rate on eBay at that time. When you looked at spot price, spot price was about 12 pounds an ounce. So on average, eBay gave you about eight to 10 pounds plus. Now eBay is a great metric for looking at the real value of silver on a market. And right now with a spot price of around 19 pounds, we're looking at eBay silver being around 28 to 30 pounds, depending on the type of coin. So again, we're adding eight to 12 pounds. There has been no fundamental shift in that value premium that's added. All that's changed is that spot price. Now, I still do think silver spot price is undervalued right now and could and maybe will at some point go a lot higher. How much higher? The shoot the moon scenario is something that has arguably not changed a lot since I got started. There were a lot of people back in 2015 making content about how great silver is and could be. Now, I always took those videos with a pinch of salt. There is no way that you're going to see any kind of investment or asset, you know, quant quadruple, I was going to quintuple there, is that even a word? Quadruple, quintuple, whatever you want to call it. There's no way those things are happening overnight. Certainly back in 2015, that was unthinkably heard of. So it was all a bit of a flight of fantasy. And I remember in my early days of making YouTube videos when we saw big movements in silver price, and I'm talking a pound an ounce over the course of a day or two, I would make videos going, this is not happening. There is no shoot the moon happening because at that exact moment, hundreds of videos would come out about, this is the time for silver. We see a lot of those types of videos now, but I think there's a lot of realism in this world as well. There are a lot of people who understand, I think more than back then anyway, that silver is not going to immediately shoot the moon and make us all millionaires, as Del Boy would say. It's just not likely. But that rhetoric is still here and grown somewhat, I think. We are now in a post-COVID world and the biggest change I see in the world of investing, collecting, stacking, whatever you want to call it, is this huge, huge shift in the kind of expectation of massive growth. 
So we are seeing post Wall Street bets and into the world of Wall Street silver, this idea that you can almost manipulate or squeeze markets. That's been categorically proven wrong. Wall Street silver failed fundamentally to even grasp the idea of squeezing silver. It just was never going to work. All they did was raise premiums temporarily. Those premiums have come back down to a relatively low level to how they were before. But what has shifted since a post Wall Street bets, Wall Street silver world is this expectation that an investment should yield you a huge return over a short period of time. And there's a lot of impatience out there I see from people who want to get that quick return, that easy money, that quick free, uh, you know, turnaround, like the crypto billionaires that will have their you know, money that they've just created out of thin air overnight. It doesn't work like that in this modern world. And I've always been a proponent of silver being a long-term investment, something that you hold for a long period of time, and then you can choose the opportune moment to sell it and get that best return. That's the best way to invest in silver. And I've never really wavered in that message. There have been a lot out there that say otherwise. The other thing that I have seen change an awful lot, and this has accelerated over the last three months, but there's always been a bit of rhetoric about it, is the devaluation of currencies. That's of course exponentially grown uh, more relevant with the printing of money during COVID, and then of course the inflation that we've seen over the last two years. The anti-banker, anti-government rhetoric, that's something I really don't like, and the creeping um, well, the creeping creep of politics within videos, I do not like as well. There has definitely been a lot of anti-banker rhetorisms. Now, I've had issues with banks lately. I've certainly been uh, critical of various banks, but I am not of the mind that there's a giant cabal of bankers with, you know, ulterior motives and all of the WEF conspiracy theories and all of that. Those are just, you know, some of them will have basis of, you know, people have twisted it, basically. They have gone over and beyond where things are. The world really isn't that, you know, sinister and all-encompassing. There isn't some huge cabal of people that are, you know, just sitting there controlling what the price of silver is going to be. And uh, it, it, it infuriates me, if I'm being honest. It really does. So I get that there is frustration out there, and that's where I think a lot of this is born from. There is frustration about money, about the cash that we have in our banks, and people see all of these very shiny YouTube videos, all of these very shiny uh, blog posts about how great silver's going to, going to be, all of these incredible um, claims that we're going to see huge prices in silver over the coming weeks and months and years, and they never really come to fruition. And I constantly, uh, I have like little reminders on my calendar, so this is quite funny. Um, I often get comments going, Mark my words, in one year's time, silver will be $200 an ounce. And I put a little calendar note in my calendar to then go and find, in a year's time, that comment that happened. And I go back and I say to that person, just checking in on how things are, where's the silver price right now? And it's amazing because those people sometimes will reply a second time and they'll go, oh, well, the banks have tamped it down and we'll be experiencing what I said in another year's time. It's exactly the same as the end of the world doomsday, doomsday sayers. They say the world will end and then it doesn't. And then they readdress their, um, you know, their sort of dates and their estimates. And I do not like that somewhat of a world of silver has come into a conspiracy theory kind of world. Um, I am not a fan of it. I, I, I'm not at all. I don't like it. There are a lot of really very smart, level-headed silver and gold stackers out there. And for those that watch my channel on a semi-regular basis, whether you dip in and out or whether you just watch religiously, the vast majority of you out there are in the camp of the level-headed, sensible people. And that's what I've always tried to be here on this channel. I'm not a world-ending um sort of proponent and if it, if it does end fine I have lots of silver I'm going to be very happy but I'll also probably be in the first wave of people that just get wrapped up in the apocalyptic ending of the world I have no doubt um, you know it's it's just not who I am and it's not who most of the channel that I have are about and there is this now growth in the world of um, social media that's the other thing that I've seen change humongously over this tenure of making videos so I started making videos sharing a bit about my silver 
boring journey, but I quickly realized that I had a lot to say about silver. I enjoyed watching other people's content, listening to thoughts and opinions, coming back with my own thoughts and opinions. But it does seem now that this is a very sort of flooded marketplace of content, which is good. It's definitely good to see so many different channels out there. And I feel very blessed to even have a presence still on YouTube and a presence that continues to grow and continues to garner new uh, subscribers. We just recently surpassed 54,000 and I hope that we'll still continue to grow over the course of the next five years to get close to that 100,000 subscriber mark. We've even seen some channels get way beyond that 100,000 subscriber mark, which is fantastic. There are some some channels out there that will pander to the world of, you know, the doomsday and the collapsing of the bank and the, or collapsing of the Fed, I should say, and the anti-banking rhetoric, um, taking a lot of politics on board as well. That's their own decisions. I don't necessarily agree with a lot of those decisions that some of those channels make, but that's absolutely fine. If they want to do that, that's great. But I won't just sit here and doom and gloom and tell you that silver's the next thing since sliced bread. I might gain a few more subscribers than I currently have, but I'd rather have a hundred, I'd rather work very hard and get a hundred thousand of you sensible backyard bullion ramblers than a hundred thousand people who just expect to make a quick buck on silver because the world is about to end. That's not who I am. So there's a lot of shift and a lot of change that's happened in this world. And I do think that it's still changing and evolving. There is no doubt in my mind that there will be a lot more change to come over the coming well, decade, to be quite honest. It's going to be a very interesting one. So I kind of like to think about where things might be for silver. We're in this interesting situation where, as I said at the earlier part of the video, I do think silver is undervalued, generally. I think that there is a case for buying silver right now, but you have to do it sensibly. You have to look at what's out there on the market right now. And this market of silver has changed unrecognizably since the start of uh, my stacking journey. So many more private mints, so many more uh, collectors out there that are focusing on particular coins, so many more different bullion offerings, premium bullion, bullion offerings as well. And it's very difficult to know what the right thing to buy is. Generally from my experience, if you are looking to get into silver, have a think about it as a very long-term asset. This is my last little swan song here before we wrap up today's video. And remember, it's not financial advice. It's just my opinion talking about what I think is the right thing to do for me. So I think if you're going to buy silver, buy it, but hold it for a long time. Think about how you're going to sell it when that time comes. What are your options? And then make the right decisions for you and your own financial circumstances. Don't necessarily buy into rhetorics. That's the other thing I would say. Everybody needs to have a critical evaluating head on top of those shoulders and really have a good think about where things might be in the future. And ask yourself really, realistically, if silver is tipped to be 10 times, 100 times its value in a short period of time, do you not think that everyone else out there in the world that's looking at making some money might have thought about that? Or could it possibly be that there are a lot of unqualified financial busybodies here on YouTube that don't really know what's going to happen, but may well have a vested interest in trying to get you to buy silver either from them or from a different source or one of their affiliate code sponsored sellers in that description box. Always be conscious of that kind of rhetoric. So anyway, that's my thoughts and opinions. It's changed a lot. I'd love to know what you think about the changes that you might have experienced over your tenure buying silver. It's anybody's guess where it will be in the future. So I guess let me know what you think about where things will be in the future. It would be great to hear from you down in the comments. Special thanks to my ramblers for watching to the 14th minute of a Backyard Bullion video. You are awesome and in the Super Cool Kids Club. We'll see you on the next video. Otherwise, that's it from me. Thanks all for watching. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.